Hello, my name is Nicholas. I'm a field application engineer working at ST Microelectronics. And today I'm going to show you how to create a gateway, like a LoRa gateway with ST boards and configure it and connect it to the things industry networks. Let's start with the gateway hardware. So in terms of hardware, I used, you know, like some boards that were provided in a kit called the Key Nucleo LRWAN2. So this is a kit from ST that you can order on our website or from a distributor. And it basically has two boards on it. So the first board is a nuclear board using a stm 2 F7. And on top, so there is a shield board, so which is an expansion board that is called the Rising HF Arduino Expansion Board, LR1 GS HF1. So when you connect you know, these two boards together, you have the hardware necessary to create your gateway. So the base board for your gateway is a Nucleo based on the STM32 F7 family. So it's using the STM32 F746, so this is uh, STM32 that is using a Cortex M7 ARM core that can run up to 216 MHz with one megabyte of flash and 320 kilobytes of SRAM. So this is a board, you know, that is called the Nucleo-F746ZG. So the same thing, you can order it, you know, separately, uh, or you can order the P-Nucleo directly which has you know, this nuclear board and also the expansion board. So on this nuclear board, you will have some user LEDs. So three uh, user LEDs, one user button, one reset button. You have an ethernet port. So there is you know, like all the connectivity for ethernet with the connector. You have a USB OTG full speed uh, device and also a 32 kilohertz crystal that is part of the board. On top of the board, you have a ST-Link V2.1. So this is basically a, our debugger or programmer. So when you connect it, you know, to your USB uh, cable to your laptop or your machine, your host, it will uh, enumerate as uh, ST-Link or virtual com port and also a master range. So basically with this, you can program you know, the stm 32 f 7 or debug it. So on this board, you have also a lot of connectors. On each side, you have a connector with all the IOs. And then in the middle, you have an Arduino interface, you know, like V3, where you can connect you know, some uh, additional boards. So here is now the gateway expansion board. So you're going to plug this board on top of the Nucleo that we have seen just before. And so this board is basically a board from Rising HF. So the part number is uh, LR1 GS HF1. So it's a LoRa high frequency band. So, uh, you know, that's the frequency that I'm using here in the United States. Um, so this is a gateway expansion board using a product SX1301 and SX1257 high frequency baseband data concentrator and cons uh, transceiver. So it will automatically adapt to spreading factor from SF12 to SF7 in each of the eight channels. It has a high sensitivity down to minus 140 dBm at 300 bits per second. The output power is up to six dBm. Uh, it also supports LoRa1 protocol class A and class C. So it also supports the Semtech packet forwarder, the DNS, and the NTP. All right, let's talk now about the gateway firmware. So basically, the gateway code that is going to run on the stm 2 F746 on the nuclear board. So when you buy a PNucleo LR112, it already comes pre-programmed, you know, with the correct firmware to join the things network. So you don't have to worry about refreshing it. But if you, for example, uh, do your own 
if you order, for example, a Nucleo uh, F746 on your side, and then you are you buy you know the expansion board for Laura, uh, basically you're going to need to uh, f a flash a firmware. So if you go to the link of the P Nucleo LR12, you will find like a link here called the Things Network Gateway Firmware. If you click on it, it will give you access, you know, to uh, the binary file that you can use to reprogram, you know, the firmware of the gateway. So this is my gateway. Uh, as you can see, you have the Nucleo F746ZG, and on top, you know, you have your LoRa expansion board. And here I connected an antenna. So there is, you know, like the antenna that is connected here. I connected uh, Ethernet, you know, to my rotor. So Ethernet, you know, rotor. And I'm powering my board, the complete actually set of the board, through this connector that is here. So this will be connected to a 5 volt power supply, like a USB uh, power supply. So 5 volts. On this side here, I'm connecting a USB cable to my uh, laptop or my PC. And this will permit, you know, to connect the virtual com ports and to send some AT commands to configure the gateway. So here we're going to talk about configuration of the gateway. So once you have, you know, powered the board, uh, you have connected, you know, your virtual com ports uh, to a terminal. So here I'm using like a TerraTerm, for example, and I can connect, you know, to it. And uh, if I press reset, I can see, you know, basically the power up or the boot of my gateway. So here is, you know, basically what we want to have. We want to be connected to TTI, so the things network or the things industrial, sorry. So, and that's, you know, basically the server that we I'm going to use for this demonstration. Uh, what else? I'm using, you know, the 1700 port for the UDP, uplink and downlink. And here I have configured it to be in the US, you know, like band, basically frequency band. So here is what, that's basically what we want to get. So how are we going to do that? So to configure the gateway, we are going to send some AT commands. So AT commands uh, through the terminal, and here are the commands you know that you want to send. So for, for example, I am in uh, United States in California, so I'm going to use the US band. So there is an AT command to basically select the frequency band. So the US you know frequency band in my case. So AT plus CH equal US 915. Then we're going to uh, select the packet forwarding address. So TTI, so the things inter, uh, industrial in my case. So this is the address you know, that I'm using and this is the two ports, UDP ports that I'm using. So there's a command called AT plus uh, packet forwarder, so PKT, FWD, and then the address of the server and basically the port numbers for uplink and downlink. So once you have sent, you know, the two commands, the 280 commands, what you're going to do is reset your gateway and check the log on your terminal. Make sure, you know, that the server has been configured properly to TTI, so the things industrial. The ports have been set to 1700, both uplink and downlink. The frequency band is actually the US one in my case. And also, you want to check, you know, this gateway ID, which is uh, basically the gateway EUI. So in the TTI interface, you will see. So please try to note that, you know, put uh, that, uh, save it somewhere, because we're going to reuse it later when we're going to uh, configure, you know, the TTI interface. So now we can configure our The Things Industries account. To do this, so of course you will need a TTI account and then you will need to log on to it. So in my case, you know, this is the link, the URL, you know, I'm going to log uh, onto. 
Uh, and once you know I am logged on, so this is you know, the interface uh, you're going to see. To add the gateway, we're going to go to the overview uh, button right there on top, you know, from the top selection, and then click on go to gateways. Then we're going to click on the icon called add gateway. So here in blue, right there. First of all, we're going to enter the general settings of the gateway. So I am the owner, so this is my logon, you know, my uh, account name. I'm going to give a name, you know, to my gateway. So my-st-gateway. For the gateway UI, so remember that's what we saw in the terminal. So this is, you know, the gateway ID. So save it, you know, from the log and then, you know, enter it right here. Then you give like a gateway name, so the name that you want, and a little description. So this is my ST gateway. Uh, the gateway server address is basically the one we configured, you know, for the packet forwarder. So use the same address here, and you can, you know, make your gateway public or not, or keep it private. So it's up to you. Okay, so now we're going to continue with the LoRa one options. So we're going to select the frequency uh, plan. So in my case, I am in California. So I'm using, you know, the United States FSB1. So this is the US band. And I'm keeping, you know, the rest of the features or, you know, like the configuration, the same as the default ones. So I didn't change the rest of it. I'm keeping, you know, the default settings. And now I can uh, click on create gateway. So the gateway was created. Now, if you click on gateways, you will see the gateway that we just created with all you know, the different credentials that we entered right now. And as you can see, the status is now connected. So your gateway is up and running and can be uh, used. So now that we have made and configured our gateway, we are going to make a LoRa device. So using ST boards, and we will connect this LoRa device to the ST gateway that we configured and connected before to the Things Industries TTI. In terms of hardware for my LoRa device, I'm using a Nucleo board based on a STM32 WL that Benjamin presented you earlier. So this is our new microcontroller with a LoRa radio embedded. So that's, you know, the nuclear board that you see right there on the left side. And I will uh, enter more details about this board. The board that I'm using is called a nuclear board. So it's based on the STM32 WL55. And uh, so that's an evolution board that we call nuclear board. So the device, it's using stm 2 WL55JC. So this is our latest microcontroller with a multi-protocol LP1. So it embeds a RF transceiver that supports LoRa, uh, FSK, MSK, and DPSK modulations. It also embeds, like because it's a microcontroller, so it has some embedded flash, 256K byte of flash and 64k bytes of SRAM. So on the board, you will find, so, so in the middle here, under basically the shield, you will find the stm 2 wl but you will also find some user LEDs connected to the stm 2 wl three different user buttons plus a reset button, a 32 kilohertz uh, crystal, so uh, precise, you know, crystal, and a 32 megahertz HSC, which is, you know, the main uh, clock. So a precise, you know, crystal to uh, clock, you know, the SM32 WL. On board, you will find also a USB connector. So the USB connector will connect to the ST-Link, where you can basically uh, program and debug your uh, stm 2 WL uh, microcontrollers. It also have a MIPI debug connector the Arduino expansion connector 
and the ST Morpho expansion you know, header on each side to have access to every single I.O. of the STM32WL. In terms of power, you can so power from the ST-Link, so from the USB connector, but you can also connect it you know, through an external su source of supply. You will just need to change you know, the JP4 uh, jumper for that. So on this kit, you also have the ST-Link that is embedded. So it's a ST-Link V3. So that's a very advanced you know, debugger, basically debugger programmer uh, through USB. And uh, it has a master age, virtual com port, and debug capability. So the part number for this board is called Nucleo STM32WL55C1. So regarding the firmware for our device, so we offer a library called the STM32CubeWL, and this is available on our website, st.com. So this offers all the libraries like the hardware abstraction layer, so the HAL, the LL, so the low layer APIs, the BSP, so the board support package, the middleware level like Artos, uh, file system, the LoRa one, the sub gigahertz file you know, access, and some application level demonstration for each uh, you know, like device or evaluation board that we have. So basically the firmware that I, I'm getting started with is going to come from this package because we offer you know, some application level for LoRa one for our Nucleo board. So here you see the structure, so the firmware package structure of the SM42 Cube WL. So if we look at it uh, from the beginning, so you have some components, you know, like driver of external components. You have some BSP, you know, for the Nucleo board, for example. So there is the BSP layer, the SIMSYS compliancy because you know we are SIMSYS compliant. So we have all the SIMSYS files, you know, that are ARM based. We offer all the drivers for every single peripherals on the SM32WL. We uh, offer some uh, third-party open source like uh, FreeRTOS, like the file system. Then in the middleware, we also offer, of course, LoRa One. So that's what we're going to use in uh, this project. <clears throat> and then we offer examples. So in the project section and under the Nucleo uh, WL55JC category or directory, we will find multiple examples. And that's one of these examples that I'm going to get started with. So the example that I'm going to get started with is located inside the cube library in the project Nucleo WL55 applications, LoRa run and node. So we offer some projects for different IDs. So in my case, I'm using IR for ID. So I'm going to open the IR project for this LoRa one and node. So this show you, you know, like the IR interface. So once you open, you know, the project, so you will see on the side your workspace, and then you can open, you know, every single file. So we offer, you know, source uh, code for all our examples. And uh, so here, for example, I uh, open the main.c. So that's the beginning, you know, of uh, the functions for the project. And so this is the interface that uh, we will use. Now we're going to uh, customize the project. So to do this, we're going to open a file called commissioning.h. So commissioning.h will have all types of parameters that we'll need to configure you know, to uh, set up the communication between the device and the ST gateway that we created before. So, here are the different parameters that we'll need to change in commissioning.h. The first thing is that we're going to enable the over the air activation. So there is a parameter called over the air activation that we will define, that will enable in the header file. We're also going to change the default, you know, change uh, the device EUI. So there is a parameter called LoRa1 underscore device underscore EUI that we will change. We will do the same thing for the join UI, 
we will also change the app key. So through a parameter called LoRa1 underscore app underscore key. And we also change the LoRa1 network key. So which will be the same as the app key. Now in a new file called LoRa1 underscore conf, a new header file, we will define the region. So in my case, I selected the US region and that will select, you know, the frequency band so that it's compatible, you know, with the configuration of the gateway that we did before. Now we're going to compile the code. So in IR, you build the project, so project built. And then once it's built, you have uh, no error, no warnings. You're going to load the code, you know, using the ST-Link. So you connect your board basically to, you know, uh, your laptop and you will load the code from IR. Okay, now, so let's configure and power the LoRa device. So to do this, so we are going to connect first an antenna. So I connected this antenna here, but I could have used a smaller one, of course, or maybe even no antenna because I'm doing the test from home. But, you know, you, so normally it comes with a smaller antenna, but uh, I had this one also, so I, why not? It works. So then we're going to power the board. So to power the board, we use a USB cable that we will connect, you know, as you can see at the bottom. So that will power, you know, like the nuclear board. So our board has been programmed, you know, with the firmware that we, uh, we set up. The board is powered, so it should be running, you know, the code that we just built and uh, programmed. So now we need to do the configuration on the The Things Industries account. So same as before, we're going to use the same, you know, like account that we use, you know, to create the gateway. So we're going to go back, you know, to the TTI account. And uh, so in my case, you know, so I'm logged in, I'm back there. And from the overviews, we're going to be looking at adding an application. Okay, so you are going to click on overview and now click on go to applications. Now that you are inside applications, we're going to add an application. So by clicking on the blue button on the right hand side called plus add applications. So let's add the general settings first for our application. So we're going to give an application ID. So in my case, it's my dash application, application name. So this is my applications or my application. And then I give a, a quick overview, a description. So my application with stm 2 wl nuclear board. We're going to enable the linking. We are going to add, you know, the network server address that is the same as what we used when we created the gateway. And then we're going to click on create application. Now that we have created application, we can add a device. So in the right hand side, so you will find an icon in blue called plus add device. So we're going to click on that. We're going to add the general settings for our device. So we're going to give a device ID. So in my case, my dash new dash device. We're going to give a device name, my new device in my case, and then a quick description of the device. So my stm 52 wl Nucleo device. Now that's very important. We're going to select the Mac version. So it will depend on which you know, device you use. So for the stm 52 wl you're going to need to select you know, the Mac version 1.0.2. And for the file, you will select the version 1.0.2 Rev B. Now, because I am in the United States, in California, I'm going to select the US, you know, plan. So FSB1. Uh, the device is a class A. So in my case, so no need. I'm not going to enable the type C, but you could enable, you know, the class C. Uh, and then we enter, you know, the network server address and application server address, which is the same as what we use, you know, in the previous slide. Okay, now we're going to advance, you know, to the uh, activation settings. 
So we're going to enable the over the air activation. So OTAA. So you're going to click on this. The join UI is the basically what you used in your firmware. So it needs to match, you know, your device uh, firmware that uh, we customized before. Same thing for the dev UI. Uh, we're going to add, you know, the joint server address. So that's the same address that we used before. So that in my case, that's the TTI address that you can see here. The app key needs to match also what we used in your firmware previously. And the rest of uh, the parameters are going to be left by default. Now you can click on create device. So now your device has been created. And if you have, you know, your gateway that is powered and connected to the Ethernet, you know, to your, your router. <clears throat> and if you have the LoRa device, you should see that the device has been linked. And now you should see also some events occurring, which shows some data exchange between the device and the gateway. So in my case here, the firmware is sending some data every 10 seconds. And I can see the log, the data that have been received, basically, or sent, you know, by the device. I can also look at the data from the gateway. So if I click on gateways, I click on my gateway, I can see that, you know, data have been uh, exchanged, uplink and downlink. And I can see that also in my uh, latest events. So I can see the different, you know, data that have been received by the gateway. So you can see more details about the data. You know, if you go in the data section of the interface, you can double click on a message that you want to expand. So that will expand it like this. And now you can see all the different parameters and the data inside, like the raw data that have been sent. So in my case, I'm sending, you know, for example, a timestamp, I'm sending like a counter, I'm sending also the uh, RSSI. So that's what I send every 10 seconds, you know, from my device to the gateway. And we can see that the data has been received uh, correctly here. Now, what you can also do is forward, you know, the packets to like uh, a service like my devices. And basically what you can do is have a nice, you know, interface to show the data graphically. Thank you everybody today for your time. So I hope uh, you learned a few things. So how to set up, you know, a gateway, LoRa gateway using ST boards, and also how to make a link or create an end node like a LoRa device, and how to use that and do that with ST board also, and using the TTI, so the things industries network. Thanks for your time. If you need more details, please visit our website at st.com. Thank you all.